used to nurse people with uh, conditions such as congestive cardiac failures, hypertension, liver failures, but now we usually nurse people with opportunistic diseases such as diarrhea, acid meningitis, usually cryptococcal, mostly HIV related, more than anything else now. Uh -huh. KwaZulu Natal is one of nine provinces in South Africa, and it really is the epicenter of the co epidemics in the country. Yes, and HIV and TB co infection. And now it seems as if the TB treatment is not responding. The rates of TB infection here and the rates of HIV are unprecedented throughout the country. We know here at Edendale, 60% of women, pregnant women, test HIV positive. So if we extrapolate back from that, um, we're looking at mid to high 40%. So just under half of the population being HIV infected. Who did you say? To my son, 21 year old boy. He came here with chicken pox and with TB, but he was... TB, a couple decades ago, was on the downswing. It was being controlled fairly well globally. Um, but with HIV coming on the scene, you see TB rising exponentially because patients who are HIV infected, of course, are at much greater risk of tuberculosis. So that's why TB is on the upswing in the inner cities of the U.S. and definitely in um, developing countries where there's a high burden of HIV. It's the number one killer far and away um, for patients who are HIV positive. He has water in his lap and near his heart and the cause of that normally is TB. So we're going to give him these two bottles to see if he has TB for now. People typically wait a very long time before they seek medical attention so they present very, where they're very, very ill and I think um, we see a lot more people honestly die here than we do in the U.S. just because people are so diseased and present so late, they've received so little treatment on the outside. Um, and I think one of the biggest differences is we see HIV probably as HIV looked in the U.S. in the late 80s, early 90s before there was treatment. And you see all of the infections and ravages of the disease that uh, we're not really accustomed to seeing anymore since therapy in countries that can afford it is so good. The main thing um, that I've gained is just, I mean, a, a true personal, you know, ex experience and understanding of it. What, you know, being here during the epidemic, getting a sense of how things really are. I mean, you hear about it back in the states, and you know, it's it's, a little, it's difficult to really get a sense of it until you come here and you see the burden that there is in the hospital. I mean. 80 to 90 percent of the patients here in the hospital are HIV positive and you know an incredible number of those have TB as well. Unfortunately that it took XDR to generate so much international um, interest in the problems. Now we have a lot of people thinking about how, what better infection control measures, better treatment me measures, integrating HIV and TB care. So these things are all essential to re-look at our protocols and find out why are we failing with standard TB treatment in the first place that are leading to both the MDR and the XDR epidemics.